Hey, what's up everybody, it's Dr. Z. All right, today I have a returning guest to one of my favorite pediatricians, Dr. Todd Wolin. So he is the co-founder of the Shots Heard Round the World campaign with um, this hashtag that we're doing, uh, Dr. Speak Up, Nurses Speak Up, Healthcare Speaks Up. We are talking about um, how we as clinicians can actually, and healthcare workers in general, have a voice around things like vaccines and advocating for the health of our patients. And Dr. Wo Lin is leading the charge. Welcome back, T. Diddy. <laughs> thank you very much. Seriously, a huge, huge, huge thank you for this and for the Dr. Speak Up campaign, because enough's enough. Dude, enough's enough. And the thing is, it's you that actually started this fire because when you came on the show, you were talking about how physicians get attacked whenever they open their mouths about vaccines. And I, this has been for a decade now. If a physician goes on social media and says, well, I kind of like this new HPV vaccine because it prevents cancer and stuff, they get mobbed by people that are not in their city, not in their state, that will go all over the physician review sites, which are horrible to begin with, and start just trying to decimate their reputation. So of course, physicians feel like they have a lot to lose by opening their mouths. And then you actually did something remarkable, which is co-found this thing that can fight back. Tell me a little bit, but remind our audience sure. about this. Yeah, Shots Heard, um, I'll refer to Shots Heard, but it's Shots Heard Around the World uh, at ShotsHerd.com. ShotsHerd.com uh, is yep, the, okay, yep. good. For now, though it's being transitioned into a nonprofit, so I'm guessing it'll go .org, which we already have the domain for. Nice. So, um, yeah, the story goes back in 2017. We produce a, a video on the HPV vaccine called We Prevent Cancer. <clears throat> goes great, 15,000 views, people making their appointments. And then three weeks later, the anti-vaccine community in one of the first recorded large-scale social media kind of attack uh events that we've ever seen happens to us three weeks after we launch it so over over 880 accounts over 10,000 posts to our facebook page and coordinated and we have shots from inside because there were pro vaccine people kind of as moles inside sending us screenshots planning out going after the yelp and the google and the facebook reviews so they were directly coordinating and yeah and again we do know that because we all have these moles in these groups and and um they'll they'll send me links all the time hey this is what they're saying about you yeah. and what i love is i love it so anytime the anti-vaccine people are talking about me it means that we're hitting a nerve right well, and that's exactly right but chad our communications director hello chad he uh he and he is the co-founder with on shots heard with me so he says it's a badge of honor if you've been if you've been attacked and that's exactly what i say it actually shows your message res is resonating because yeah. they wouldn't attack you in large-scale fashion if you weren't resonating just like nicole baldwin who wants a huge shout out because she is a oh, huge nicole C -Dog Bald fan. baldwin nicole baldwin is the reason that i was forced to go and join tiktok <laughs> and act like a you know for the 46 year old man that i am like hey guys it's me on tiktok <laughs> because she crushed that yes. video and you're pretty popular on tiktok as well it's coming up because you're, re you're reaching younger people that are yes. a different audience and and the thing is so she did this really cool video that i did a rant about before where she's talking about these are the things right that vaccines will will keep you safe from and here's what it doesn't do cause autism beautifully done it was clever the music was funny and she got destroyed by an attack meaning destroyed meaning they tried to go after her reputation it's the largest attack we have on record it was about three to five times as large as the attack on us. And it absolutely was because it resonated. And so Nicole, I told her, she's like Katniss and Black Widow and Princess Leia all rolled into one now, right? <laughs> she sent me the she sent me the gift kind of like, you know, this one where oh. like the Katniss said, I know what that means. I said, that'll be like the new sign when you're on stage. Dude, was she like, help me, Paul off You're our only hope. <laughs> That's really awesome. She and I were texting this morning. I said, you were all wrapped up into one. You are like the vaccine heroine or hero she's, that you are. She's a badass sis. Is that the female? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it yeah. is there. And and there's people that preceded me and and Nicole, right? There's there's a, a decade ago, there's David Gorski who still does stuff now. There's Free Hess who ramped up the Doctor Speak Up. She has like elevated that. Um, and there's people just in the trenches. Conrad, swim with him. He's an ER nurse at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. He's like, man, I've been following it. This is awesome. And there's all these people that are now pledging their support for March 5th using the hashtag Doctor Speak Up and then adding their own hashtag, whether it's students speak up, parents speak up. And we now have 
have people monitoring it. So we have University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public Health and the Center for Research on Media Technology and Health are tracking that hashtag, as are some other, other groups globally, to actually see what it's like when we fight back. Man, I love it so much, because this has been so long in coming. Like we've been, I've been yelling about vaccines for about 10 years since I started the platform, and I, I relish the attacks because all it does is increase our reach, right? So it jazzes up Facebook algorithms, it jazzes up uh, engagement with the content. So from my standpoint, reputationally, it's actually better to stir the pot. But for a practicing clinician out in 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 uh, you know practice in the community, it, it, it people don't understand how important our reputation is to our practice and our livelihood. So Absolutely. when that's attacked, people feel an existential threat to their livelihood, their families, and their their whole calling of being a physician. And also I think it hurts people because they're not used to being attacked like that. They're not used to this kind of viciousness. Because let's be honest, Todd, like the anti-vaccine cult that leads these kind of attacks are cowards. They hide behind the computers. They're not using their real names. They're out in in the world just sniping because they have this idea that this is the way you're effective in the world by tearing, by bullying, by tearing people down. And and um, when a doctor who actually has experience seeing, I don't know, cases of measles, kids on ventilators from varicella and pneumonia or something like that, meningitis, uh, the preventable illnesses that are that are that are coming back potentially because of this harm, right? When they speak out, they're attacked. It's this asymmetric kind of warfare. So what you've done is you've actually done something to make it more symmetric. And that's what March 5th is about, right? Doctors speak up, nurses speak up, healthcare, whoever it is speaking up. The point is we speak out. They can't hurt us all. And in fact, even if they did, even if they did, your Shots Heard campaign goes into overdrive, right? Yeah. How does that even work? So Shots Heard has four components to it. One is, um, we have research. We actually have a, a publication in the journal Vaccine, and we're continuing to do more research now. We're monitoring, tracking, and reporting their activity. Now, by the way, that's really cool because yeah. then you can show doctors with science go, hey, this actually works, so don't panic. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. The, so there's the research side and now the collaboration side. We want other big entities to get on board. But beyond that, there's the cavalry. We're the only entity that I know of that has a counter offensive capability. If people get attacked, we're gonna come to their aid. And we're gonna, and bullies don't like to be pushed back. Chad says this all the time. And as soon as they do, I can show you a graph where when they started getting attacked by the people that came to our defense, they just dispersed. So there's ramping up the cavalry. There's the um, toolkit, which has been revised three or four times that needs to be revised again. So we're on top of that. And that's what the idea with the resources of shots are going nonprofit. And the fourth, is this awareness campaign. It's it's what you're doing. It's me being on the road. I've been to the CDC. I've spoken. I was the keynote speaker in France at the seventh accept, uh, vaccine acceptance meeting. How's everybody doing? They're from Australia. They're from all over the place. They're from Europe. Um, but yeah, we've, I mean, this is an enormous amount of resources. I just want to say Kids Plus Pediatrics, our practice, has footed the entire bill for the last two and a half years. Mm. And I don't know why there's a, a practice private independent pediatric practice that's doing this fight. Now there's a lot of other individuals, like I said, Eve Switzer, or other people out there doing stuff, but why isn't this being fought on a much larger scale? Because the World Health Organization has listed this as a top 10 threat, anti-vaccine and vaccine hesitancy, which is driven by them. And again, we're not against people with questions. If there's 23% of people with questions, we wanna answer them. It's the one to 2% that do exactly what you said. They weaponize social media, and they terrorize, they take pictures, they they try and smear your reputation, they take pictures of people's kids mm -hmm. and their bus routes and say, hey, we know where your kids go to school, stay safe. That's terrorism. Uh, that's terrorism. That's terrorism. It's plain and simple. Yeah. And, and what, what you said is very important. We talked about this in our last conversation. We're not talking about people who have questions. We're not no. talking about even people who are seriously, you know, I don't want to vaccinate because of what I've read online. Those are the people we should be reaching. Yeah. But that one to 2% of weaponized, I call them anti-vax cult members. They are so, um, what's the term they use for terrorists? They've been radicalized. So they're so <laughs> severely radicalized that you can't address, you cannot. And that's why, by the way, and I, this is something that I have to rant about. It for a second. Doctors yeah. speak up, we're gonna use the hashtag. It's gonna be all over Twitter, all over social media. One thing you're gonna notice is you're gonna to start to attract these anti-vaccine uh, cult people. They're gonna turn the thread into total ding-dongery because that's what happens. So I'm, I'm tagged on some thread with 45 other people mm -hmm. and it's just a stream of idiocy because it's doctors going, you're, you're totally clueless about what you're talking about and anti-vax pe 
people saying crazy stuff. This is what I, please, this is my recommendation for doctors speak up. You speak up, you use the hashtag, you say what you think about whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be vaccines. Maybe it's about you know health equity. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. When the anti-vaccine cult comes, and they will block every single one of them, if someone comes and they're on the fence, engage them. If someone comes and it's clear from their pattern of behavior that they are an anti-vax cult member, just block them, then they are out of that conversation because they weaponize social media, we weaponize it right back. Exclude them from the conversation because they have nothing to say. It's been established. That That's that's my pitch. What do you think about that? Is that crazy? Yeah, I wouldn't say we weaponize a bag. I say we push out good content and, and neutralize their weaponization because we're using it the way it should be. The way it should be is pushing out good content from credible resources, exactly like you said. Right. But what they do is weaponize it because they do it with smearing and harm and fear and lies. And that's what, in my view, is weaponization. We're using it the way it was meant to be used. That was the whole, con- that was the whole concept behind the internet good information wherever you want it, whenever you want it. I consider the block button now, I never used to block people because it's kind of a sign, oh, oh, we don't wanna hear what they have to say because they it may be hitting close to home. No, with anti-vaxxers, we've heard everything yeah. they have to say. At this point, it's a Patriot missile, the block button, yes. to a scud. Uh, 100%. And that's it. And, and that, the social media platforms could help us further, right? Facebook could right now say, if you're following Larry Cook's group or some other anti-vax group, I'm not banning your free speech. I just don't want your people following my, my my page. They could have filters just like Twitter has block bots. So there's work that can be done and we need to hold the social media platforms accountable. But again, that's another thing that Shots Heard is doing now is kind of creating the collective voice to go to the social media platforms. But back to your original point, what do we do with all those steps that I told you about? We create what Chad is for us, our communications director in a group like Nicole Baldwin's where she doesn't. Now she does actually. She just started today, their first communications director, which we think there's real value to that for any group. But again, Eve Switzer, who I pointed out in Oklahoma, her practice was near devastated. She saw her ratings drop. She saw in the mommy blogs people saying, I don't know, they used to be four stars. Now they're like one, I wouldn't go there. Mm. She actually had lawsuits brought against her. And that woman is tireless. She is working incredibly hard within the AAP and beyond and in the court system, fighting this kind of fraudulent, uh, uh, a fear-based uh, hate that's been thrown against her. That's that's amazing. And again, it, it speaks to the fear that doctors feel if they're going to be treated like that. It's not like we're not busy, right, Todd? Like <laughs> we're so busy clicking boxes in an EHR that's a cash register. We're busy dealing with like, okay, how do we actually take care of patients who are uninsured? Like there, there, there's so much that's on our plate that's creating moral tension, moral injury, moral distress, end-stage burnout yeah. that to throw on this. And then the same anti-vaccine cult will say, well, my doctor does doesn't look me in the eye because he's looking at a computer. Okay, how about you start advocating about fixing that? How about we stop having fluff pieces from Judy Faulkner from Epic talking about how great EHRs are and start fixing them, making them more usable? Maybe you can have a button in an EHR that says, here's the 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 way we talk with anti-vaxxers using Todd's mnemonic that you taught us last time. What was that mnemonic again? AIM, so it's announce, inquire, mirror and secure it's a it's a a methodology to really do some active listening to understand what the person's concerns are to help them understand that you're hearing them and then to ask if you can kind of share some information and get on their side of the table because there's a ton of fear out there there's a ton of fear out there you know what's interesting so i had a uh, recent encounter up in marin which is a hotbed of interesting ideology but uh a lovely group of people that I was talking to, it was like a mini meditation retreat. So afterwards they would tell me things like, well, you know, I have this pain in my side and I saw my naturopath or, you know, my children aren't vaccinated because of this, that, and the other thing. And what, what's what's weird though, Todd, is like, it. I would have been like, <laughs> you know, yeah. but instead I was like, I was in their in their mental state in a way because you meditated. I, you I was meditating meditated. <laughs> and I was like, I, were present? Un- I understand I'm more present and I understand why you would feel these things. The Western medical uh, model is failing you. You do have this sort of mindset that we are these sort of energetic mind body things. And so the naturopath makes sense. Not injecting yourself with what you perceive as toxins makes perfect your, sense. Your interview with Britt, right? She went down that pathway because that dermatologist was a jack off to her. Yeah. I mean, that's a Pittsburgh word. So, it yeah, means no, it's a, a good means word. A jerk. It's a good word. No, no, but Britt but Brit was a great example. Britt was a former naturopath who uh, then became a, a scientist in the in the in the true objective sense. Yeah. And her whole thing, she was drawn to naturopathy because the Western the, the dermatologist was a 
total <laughs> jack off. He was. And I wrote a whole piece on that saying, hey, naturopathy may be mostly BS, but there's a part of it that can teach us a lot about what we're doing wrong. In Western medicine, yeah. you you said it, we're clicking and we're under the clock and we're trying to move on, right? There's real crises in healthcare everywhere. Yeah. I don't wanna be this guy. I don't wanna be on your show twice being the guy that fights anti-vaccine rhetoric. I wanna be the guy that's, I, I mean, I'm still clinical 25%. I'm the CEO of a private pediatric practice, three offices, 100 employees, 20 providers. What, what are we doing now? We're working on integrated behavioral health. We're working on social determinants of health. We have social workers now that are working on this. We're working actually with the health plan to come up with novel models to deal with poverty. And I'm working with government and a bunch of other, that's what I want to do, right? That's where I want to put my emphasis. And I'm here again, <laughs> talking about like <laughs> anti-vaccine stuff. You know what? You just got a nice pitch in because what you just described is health 3.0. And, and I, that's what we're working on, but we're distracted by BS. Now, now, and the truth is it, it does, it hurts, right? That it, we're, it, it sucks. It and sucks. Not to mention the burnout, the moral injury and the suicide, right? There's real crises. We need to have policymakers putting money into the kind of things that are gonna make healthcare, including EMRs and everything else better. But how much, how much are we putting right now into this? The World Health Organization listing this as, as a, a top 10 concern. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> This is something I struggle with because I hate talking about vaccines. I hate it. It It's like, yeah, they work. Let's move on. And in fact, you know the other reason I hate it, Todd, and this is something I don't talk about publicly, it's focusing on reductionism. Like we can use a, a simple way to prevent a disease. And that's one of the cases where reductionism absolutely works. There's a lot of medicine where it doesn't work, where it's all the things you talked about. It's social, it's psychological, it's uh, environmental. There's a bigger picture. We ought to be focusing on that mm -hmm. instead of on the bit of reductionism that does work. We should be focusing on the reductionism that doesn't work. Like when I had um, the editor-in-chief of JAMA Internal Medicine on the show, and she was talking about less is more medicine and how a lot of what we do doesn't work. So it, it, it's tough to just keep having to go to bat for the things that work. We ought to be talking about how can we make the things that don't work work better? And the vaccine thing is so distracting. Let's settle that and move on, right? Now, you're never gonna settle it for those one to 2%, yeah. but what you can do is what you're doing, and that's why I'm so glad to have you back on. It's prevent them from causing the harm that they're capable of causing. And even more so, let's reveal their ulterior motives. Oh, please do. Okay, so. Wait a minute, you think there's a supplement industrial complex? Because I do. Maybe, maybe yeah. Paul Offit wrote a book on it. Uh, yeah. Do you believe in magic? I don't know, maybe, but uh, no, right? Here's the deal. I have to disclose, because they're still coming on there. I consult with Merck and Sanofi, anybody out there, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I consult with immunization action coalitions, breastfeeding coalitions, I'm also a lactation consultant. You might wait, 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 that. stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Stop. Don't You're a lactation again. consultant. Yes, you okay. called me a breast Nazi last yes. time. Yes. <laughs> Did you see my emoji video about lactation consultants? No. So it's called the lactation shark. And it's a parody of like the worst lactation consultants. Oh. Like the one that are just like, you will eat the breast Absolutely. Milk. There's extremism, right? Yes. We want to use evidence-based guidance. And, our, and we have something called the Breastfeeding Center Pittsburgh. It's kind of a, a, a world-class breastfeeding support. And guess what our mantra is? We want to support moms the way they want to be supported as long as we can give them the information so they can good, make it. good decisions. That's it. That's it. So so back to you were yeah. saying you, you've you disclosed all this stuff. By the way, I want to come back on here and talk about breastfeeding one day, I swear. Oh, yeah. Why not? I have a, I have a whole thing. There's a, there's Dr. Anna Meyer right up in San Francisco. We have a whole whole thing for you. Yeah, great. But But, but yeah. The, the ulterior motives, let's talk about it. So I have to disclose, if you can go online, you can see, yep, I do work, I have to disclose what I make. Does do any of these people, when they say, don't use vaccines, they can be harmful, but buy my essential oils, yeah. or use our crystals, yeah. do they talk about how much profit they make from that? No. No, so there's monetizing, there's politicizing, particularly from the libertarian side, that says nobody should be able to tell you what to put in your body or your, your child's body, but vote for me, right? right? And then finally, polarizing, just trying to create hate and distrust using fear that comes from hostile foreign nations that actually use like soviet era like disinformation campaigns and we have articles on it and, and Rush, it, russian bots and the anti-vax movement right? yeah why don't we reveal their ulterior motives mm -hmm. because you actually talked about kids that have now died when people are going for advice like should i give them tamiflu yeah right and no they say, no use potatoes and limerick or, 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 or turmeric and, yeah. and uh and a limerick and a, <laughs> and a right limerick. but right i mean that's a horrific that's yeah. a horrific example of somebody who was not even once during that whole thread, which Larry Cook took down, yeah. suggested to go to the ER, go back to the doctor. Right. Just more and more, more alternative, nothing, and this kid died. 
Yeah. That's not okay, right? No, it's not. There's not kids even close dying to that, right? and suffering. And that's why we're doing this. There's kids and there's adults and there's people that can't get vaccinated. They're suffering or terrorized for going outside or going into a shopping mall, right? I mean, people are freaked out about coronavirus and I wore masks on the plane yesterday right. to just kind of segue this craze that we have right now. But we have evidence-based science and vaccines to keep us safe. Why aren't we using them? Why aren't we using them? I mean, we can prevent cervical cancer like Australia is aiming to do. Within, they're recommending within... Uh, um, I think it's Anna uh, Juliana from uh, Moffitt Cancer Center is predicting. She's saying within like 25 to 30 years, they could eliminate cervical cancer That's on that insane. continent. That's insane. Because they have such an uptake. Because they mandated it for school. Yeah. And the prime minister's wife, I think, had cervical cancer or had HPV. And so they were a huge proponent of getting that vaccine into, into all kids so that they could be protected. You know, every time I hear the phrase prime minister, I always think of Zoolander. Must kill the prime minister. <laughs> The Malaysian prime minister. That has nothing to do with this talk. But I could do a blue steel look, but I'm trying to hold it you back. You know what? You're so. holding it back for, <laughs> for when Magnum comes out, right? You're going to release the next. Uh, but I think your point, too, about our social media platforms needing to step up is important. Like we recently did a thing with Peter Hotez, who you introduced me to, um, about coronavirus. And I put it up on YouTube and it got a ton of engagement because he was talking about how we, healthcare workers are on the front lines and they're at the greatest risk. 15% of them were hospitalized with severe disease in Wuhan. Um, that's, I mean, 15% of those that got sick were hospitalized with, with severe disease and over 3,000 got sick. This is a huge deal. Now I have friends in the Bay Area who are getting exposed, who emailed me who are under quarantine now yeah. and um it's it, it, i put that out on youtube and youtube uh demonetized it because it said coronavirus so they've been burned by so much false coronavirus stuff so they just instantly demonetize it and then they put a who link at the bottom that says learn more about coronavirus people thought i installed that yeah. no it was youtube so i understand they took a one size fits all hammer and applied it to anything with the word coronavirus in it so that's a dumb bomb approach to doing it, it pinterest took vaccine searching all the way out for a while took it out yeah now they've reintroduced it right but, yeah. so they, they, we've got to get smarter algorithms or somebody reviewing it you know whatever because they review for violence they review for other things like that so i, I do want to point out for social media platforms they are now because of pressure of you know endemic things like measles and outbreaks of things like uh the coronavirus they have preferentially now try to serve up fact-based information and put in CDC and WHO prompts. They still have done jack nothing on weaponized attacks against ratings yeah. and reviews. Yeah. So I, I'm looking wherever I need to look. I, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Do something. Do something about these attacks. Because right now, it is people's livelihoods. And you are empowering people that are using fear and lies to profit themselves to, to, to basically demolish people that are talking about science. And we're pissed off. We're pissed off. We don't want to have to think about what are the repercussions for talking about science and evidence-based medicine. We're done. And that's what doctors speak up about. We're done and we're coming back. I agree. And I think we have to stop being cowards. Yeah. That's the other thing. We are terrified of this stuff. And the vaccine people thrive on in introducing fear. That's why they go, you know, Richard Pan was on the show here sitting where you're sitting and he, you know, he had... People push him and shove him, people throwing blood. Oh, yeah. These people are not, um, they're not unradicalized. And you worry that one day something's going to happen where someone's going to get hurt. Like the, you know, you have these anti-abortion people uh, that go to clinics and try to injure doctors. It's the same kind of thing. If you think that these doctors are killing babies, you will do whatever it takes. He was pushed. Richard was pushed. Yeah. They threw the blood. I mean, but uh, you're, you're 100% right. That is... You can understand why a onesie twosie practice is kind of freaked out if they post something that they're going to get attacked. But you still have people that are brave, like I said, that are getting up and doing it. What about the big health systems? What about our professional organizations? I will tell you. Cowards. That, cowards. I will tell you that when we were on the cover of the, of the LA Times, a nine-person communications team, because they saw the picture of me and Chad, our communications director, asked for Chad. And the nine-person team sets up a conference call and says, we need your help, man, because our CEO and CFO of this large quaternary pediatric health system that runs on tax dollars and other things said that our CEO and CFO just told us to go silent, don't post anything on our social media platforms about vaccines, headed into flu season. 
Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's that lives up to your creed of actually protecting the public, right? And 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 then we're going to trust these people to handle a coronavirus outbreak, yeah. right? You're supposed to be the beacon of light, right? You're supposed to guide us. People are looking for information from you, and they go silent because they're worried about press gainy and they're worried about social media reviews. Which why again, platforms, please, like you said, fix your ish. Yeah, and and get it straight. Stop. I mean, you can you can do it. Yelp did it within two weeks. They took down every fraudulent review. Google, still struggling. Facebook, I don't know if they're doing much. The weaponized attacks and vitals.com, talk about Monique stuff, all those places, they're not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, these places are horrible to begin with. I mean, the truth is we need better review capacity for physicians uh, because those things are enriched in people who are either really unhappy yeah. or, you know, it, it's the whole thing is gamed. It's like those best doctor awards. Yeah. Like, do you have a plaque that says best doctor, Todd Willen? I've had many people offer to send me yes. after I've been listed on those. I'm like, how did I get on that? Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, well, you got to pay a thousand bucks and you get the plaque. I think that's yeah. exactly. And yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> it's, it's this very similar stuff. We need better mechanisms to tell who are good doctors from bad. This has been a challenge for a long time. And what even defines a bad doctor? So this whole review thing. Now, what Shots Heard does is it, it immobilizes an army of 600 people. And what exactly are they doing now? Uh, I, I'm going to share. I got my old man glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I got, got some, Costco readers. I, I, got, I, got some, I got some. I got. They're progressive, so oh, I can not, still see oh, you in my context. Nice. But that, yes. Yeah, so fancy. all right. So um, here's the deal, right? Yeah. Shots heard. This is uh, as of today. We've only been up and running. And again, people don't come to our website for entertainment. They come to our website to defend themselves. Right. So as of today, we've been up and running for four months. Twenty six thousand page views. How many people have downloaded the toolkit? Over 2,200 people have downloaded the toolkit. This is just for defense purposes. And we're now having visits and downloads from over 95 countries. Top tens like US, Australia, Canada, UK, Japan, New Zealand, Germany, Ireland, Netherlands, France. And every other week we check it. So India's been up there, Italy's been in there, South Africa's been in you there. You call me when Luxembourg shows up because then I know you've arrived. <laughs> we have not <laughs> seen have you, two Luxembourg. Fans. I have two fans in Luxembourg really? that are on my email list. Right. Yes, we did, we did not get Luxembourg. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? One day you'll be cool like me, Todd. So, but this is, but so this is a serious, this is a serious thing because what you do is you mobilize these guys, and they can then counter some of these attacks. How how does that work exactly? So again, the idea here is that if there's an attack, shots heard is alerted either now by multiple members. And we have over 600 vetted members, right? So it's private people. It's a private vetted group. So if you want to join, you go to our website or you go to join at shotsheard.com. We actually send you out a survey monkey, and we review all your social media profiles, mm -hmm. and we also review where you work. And some people and the anti-vax groups have now been listing like infiltrate our group yeah, yeah so we've had people say oh i'm kathy jones i work at oklahoma's uh um, public health department so we'll call down there and they'll be like nobody works here with that oh <laughs> so, nice so there um but what we'll do is once we see the attack we'll go ahead we'll vet make sure it's a real large-scale coordinated active ongoing attack and then we hit the button right we send out the list uh to, we send out the the push to the uh all the uh, people on the email list and say, help this person at this account. And while people have to maintain their own level of professional decorum on their own site, the people that are coming to their defense usually are attacking with data and explicatives. And so yeah. that's that's cool, that's fine. And so um, that's how the attack, they, they're they given support, they're given positive comments. People start then kind of, the, the people that are attacking the anti-vaxxers get peeled off or they don't wanna deal with a fight so they go somewhere else to look for somebody that doesn't have defense. And so this has really been empowering. And again, the doctors speak up event is about this empowerment that we're stronger together and we're our ranks are growing the, the visits and the downloads are actually the, if you look at the chart it's really scaling up now mm. so we see that people are ticked off they don't want to be bullied just for talking about science and, and best practices that are evidence-based so mm. this is time's up we're, we're here now and 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 now we're working on it and we want to see the big organizations come in and, and, and aid aid this situation. Oh, good luck, man. You think the AMA is gonna open their mouth about this stuff? There's no way. I it, this the, I, Okay, that's my cynicism. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm challenging them to do that. Yes. I'm challenging the big physician organizations, our big healthcare organizations on March 5th and beyond that, hashtag doctor speak up if you're a doctor organization, hashtag nurses speak up, whatever your specialty is to say something positive and educational that will help the public about vaccines. And if they do that, if we all stand up on March 5th like we're gonna do, yeah. then first of all, we're gonna measure that outcome, we're gonna get more confidence, and we're gonna really back, again, education about science when the science is freaking solid, right? And, and, and in this case, it is. And so let's do that. That'll be the call to action, right, Todd? Yeah. And if people get attacked from that, they can come to shotsherd.com for now, maybe a .org later. <laughs> Yeah. And start recruiting um, help. And do what you said. Don't back down. 
if you get attacked, don't take your post down. They revel. Oh, they that. love that. Yeah. They're inside their groups going, wow, they sh- look, they shut off their ratings. Oh, they took down the post. Stand up. Look what Nicole Baldwin did. Look what we did. Look what Bragg Bigford did. Look what Eve Switzer did. If you stand up, you become like this uber advocate because one, you've blocked them all so they can't come back and yeah. attack you. Yeah. Two, you shift the narrative. The narrative, what they want to talk about is safety and choice goes to local healthcare provider using evidence-based practice, tries to protect their community using vaccines, gets attacked by outsiders, right? Because these aren't people in your community. And Nicole didn't get attacked in Cincinnati and Brad didn't get attacked from Idaho. They get attacked from New Zealand and Texas and California and all over the place. These are local healthcare advocates trying to protect their patients and they're being attacked by outside kind of fanatical people who also were, have their own ulterior motives. Yeah, and what I would say is this, speaking of ulterior motives, so a couple things. One is, on this, during this campaign, if any anti-vaxxer hits you up that doesn't look like they're just a concerned mom with questions or a concerned dad with questions, ban them. Just block them, ban them. If you're on Twitter, just ban go block. Delete. If you're on, and delete, and get rid of it because they don't get your platform. They can have their own platform. It's a free country and they can be criticized for their platform, but they don't get your platform. The second thing is um, doctors are worried to speak out about science. Why aren't the Cheryl Tenpennies, who's a scam artist, con artist, former board certified emergency uh, osteopath who basically sells BS stuff and is making money on lies about vaccines, why isn't she afraid of her reputation or her credibility or her license? Why isn't Mercola, who is another scam artist who is basically making millions, lives in a like $10 million mansion in Chicago or some crap, whose wife, Erin, runs Natural News, which is another, or Erin something or other, some other BS group. These people are costing lives. Why aren't they nervous? about their reputations? Why aren't um, pro-vaccine people going on their pages? You know, by the way, I went on Chen Penny, Ten Penny's page a while back uh, as a troll, but I did it in a very clever way so they didn't figure out I was a troll because I was doing it all sarcastically. And then finally she figured it out and she blocked me instantly. So they're quick to block us. Yes, I think we should be even quicker to block them. And that's all in the Shots Are Toolkit. It talks about exactly what you're talking about, the blocking, the banning, the hiding, deleting. It actually has crisis management sheets in the back of this toolkit, so it's like 80 pages as it goes into a deep dive. But if you're getting attacked and your Google, your Yahoo ratings are getting attacked, there's a page, single page crisis management sheet on how to deal with that, how to report it, how to fight it. Same thing for Google. And when we do the next revision on it, it's gonna really even be further, broader, expanded uh, resources, but that's exactly right. Don't back down, get to shots heard. You have you have friends, you have allies, and we're our team's building now. I love it. Todd, thank you again tomorrow or whenever we're gonna release this prior, let me, let me just say, it's going to happen. <laughs> Hashtag Dr. Speak Up. And don't forget, New York Times is going to be reporting on Dr. Speak Up, right? So they right. have they have a story on this exact fight back. So it's going to be in the Times. It's going to be global. And this that's, is going to be a global it's, event. It's about time we took back the media narrative on this because for too long, the media was actually feeding into this anti-vaccine nonsense by giving it false equivalency, by saying there are two sides to the story when there aren't. Right. So it's about time. Todd, thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you so, so, so much. Get you back on to talk about this breastfeed stuff because that's a whole nother thing it's gonna gonna be good (laughs) yeah 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 and shout out dr speak up guys do me a favor share this with the hashtag dr speak up or nurses speak up or whoever it is you are speak the heck up we're healthcare professionals we're still trusted in this country let's use that platform for good and we out peace